Hello, this is Mr. Buffington from Simplify Academy, and today in Simplify Academy, we're simplifying ratios. That makes sense. We are going to look at simplifying, and then we're going to do several examples and practice. That is what we're doing today. Before we get into the math of this, I want to explain to you why we simplify and show you what simplifying looks like. We simplify to make things more accessible or easy for us to understand. For example, if your parents give you an allowance of $260 per year, that might not be a helpful number for you to know. Why is $260 a year? How much is that? I don't understand. Like, it's kind of confusing and it might be more helpful for them to tell you how much they pay you per week or how much they pay you per month or how much they pay you per day. And that's what simplifying is. It's just, it doesn't change how much money you make, but it just makes it in a more relatable and understandable way. We are going to simplify ratios. And I want you to remember something about ratios is that ratios can be written as a fraction. So we have simplified fractions before. That means that we're all set with simplifying ratios. We're gonna follow exactly the same steps and you're gonna get this real quick. So here is an example of a fraction or a ratio. And here are the steps that I would need to follow to simplify it. I would list out the factors of both the numerator and denominator, identify my greatest common factor, and then divide both the numerator and denominator by the greatest common factor. So I'm dividing the top and bottom of the fraction by five. That gives me my fraction in lowest terms. Now I want to show you visually what just happened here. So you understand I'm not changing the value I'm not reducing the value. I am just simplifying the way that it looks. Let's take a look. Here is what it looks like physically. If I have a fraction of five over 10, here are, five, are 10 pieces. I'm gonna highlight five of them. It's exactly the same as having two pieces and filling just one. Notice the size of that red box is exactly the same. It does not change the value. It just makes it in a simpler form. Another way to think about it is maybe with cars and trucks. Let's say I have um, five out of 10 of my vehicles are trucks, right? And five out of 10 of my vehicles are cars. So I could say then one out of every two is a truck and one out of every two is a car, right? We can simplify it down so that it just looks a little bit easier, all right? That's all we're doing. We're just trying to make things look a little bit more simple. We are not changing the value, and that's really important that we understand. A lot of adults don't even understand that, so you are ahead of the game. Let's simplify this fraction here. I should have said, let's simplify this ratio because we're in ratio lesson. If you would like to try it and you feel confident, go ahead and pause and practice. If you'd like to see me walk through it first, that's absolutely fine as well. Here are the steps. Step number one is to list the factors. I'm going to list the factors of four and six. Then I'm going to identify my greatest common factor. In this case, it's two. Then I divide both the four and six by the greatest common factor of two. So I'm gonna to divide top and bottom of the fraction by two. That gives me my final answer of two thirds. So four sixths is the same thing as two thirds. Two thirds is just a more simple way of writing it. Here's a practice for you. I want you to try this one on your own. List the factors of three and eight, find your greatest common factor and divide the top and bottom by that greatest common factor to have a simplified ratio. Go for it. Now, did this one give you a little bit of pause? Was it a little bit challenging? We had um, the factors of one and three and the factors of one, two, four, and eight. So when we were asked to find the greatest common factor and divide by that greatest common factor, it made it very difficult because the only common factor is one. When two numbers have the greatest common factor of one, we call them relatively prime or the numbers are 
prime compared to each other. They only have one in common as, fa as a factor. So that tells us that this fraction is already in simplest form. That's what that means. All right, try this practice. I want you to simplify 3 over 12. I promise you this one has a greatest common factor other than 1. Go ahead and try that out and then resume the recording for me to show you the steps. Step 1, list the factors. 3 has a factor of 1 and 3. 12 has a factor of 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12. The greatest common factor in this case is 3. So we're going to divide the fraction top and bottom by 3 to get our fraction in lowest terms, 1 fourth. All right. Next practice question. Again, I want you to pause and practice. This one should take a little bit more time. There's going to be way more factors of 36 and 72. Go ahead and pause and try that one out. Hey, welcome back. When we list the factors of 36, we get a lot of numbers. There's also a lot of factors of 72. When we're asked to find the greatest common factor, this can be somewhat challenging when there's so many common factors. In that case, you might want to circle all the common factors um, to find out the one that's the largest, or start at the largest number and work your way backwards. In this case, 36 is the greatest common factor. Again, there's a lot of common factors there, but 36 is the greatest common factor. So we're going to divide the top and bottom by 36 and find that this fraction is actually equal to 5 out of 10, right? It's one half. 36 out of 72 is half. So that's the fraction we've been working with quite a bit today. All right, a couple things to remember. Simplifying does not change the value. It just makes things simple. Look for the greatest common factor, divide by the greatest common factor. That's how you simplify a ratio. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Make sure to take, uh, take time to do all the questions in the worksheet and look at the answer key to check your work. Then go ahead and take that quiz. Good luck on the quiz and have a wonderful day.